Welcome to this, our first online service of morning prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. Hopefully you will all have sight of an order of service and I invite you to join in with me with the words in bold. We are joined with others through this service, but I want to say a particular thanks to Teresa, who has sung the set songs for us. These will be shared on the screen so you can follow them. But let us now begin our service. Render your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil. Dearly beloved brethren, the scriptures moved us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble or cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although it ought at times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, it ought most chiefly so, chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hand, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well as for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying with me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promise is declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfailingly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do to this present, that the rest of our lives hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Teresa will now sing the Venite. Oh, the Lord is our God. 
Today's psalm of the day is Psalm 128. We say together, Blessed are all those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the toil of your hands. It shall go well with you, and happy shall you be. Your wife within your house shall be like a fruitful vine, your children round your table like fresh olive branches. Thus shall the one be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord from out of Zion bless you, that you may see Jerusalem in prosperity all the days of your life. May you see your children's children, and may there be peace upon Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 14, starting at the 17th verse. After his return from the defeat of Chedorlaomer and the kings who were with him, the king of Solomon went out to meet him at the valley of Shaveh, that is the king's valley. And King Malchadek of Saddam brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God most high. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham by God, most high, maker of heaven and earth. And blessed be God, most high, who delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abraham gave him one-tenth of everything. This is the first reading. We now say the Te Deum together. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth does worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, 
Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army, army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee the father of an infinite majesty, thine honourable true and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the comforter. Thou art the king of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting son of the father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, Thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sitteth at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy law, thy name, ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. The second Bible reading will now be said, followed immediately by Teresa singing the Jubilate. The New Testament reading is from John chapter 2, starting at the first verse. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward, called the, bride, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory and his disciples believed him. Here endeth the second reading. Not we ourselves, we are his people and 
uniting with Christians all around the world, we together say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. The Collect for today, the third Sunday of Epiphany. God of all mercy, your Son proclaimed good news to the poor, Release the captives and freedom to the oppressed. Anoint us with your Holy Spirit and set all your people free to praise you in Christ our Lord. Amen. And the other general prayers, beginning with the collect for peace. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose servant service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy ser humble servant, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that us day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by the governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our heavenly Father, high and mighty King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, who does from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth, most heartily we beseech thee with thy favour to behold our most gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with all the grace of thy Holy Spirit, as she may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way. Endue her plentifully with heavenly gifts. Grant her in health and wealth long to live. Strengthen her that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies. And finally, after this life, she may attain everlasting joy and felicity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech you to bless Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, Charles, Prince of Wales, and all the royal family. Endue them with thy Holy Spirit, enrich them with thy heavenly grace, prosper them with all happiness, and bring them to thine everlasting kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone us works great marvels, send down upon our bishops and curates and all congregations committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of thy grace. They may truly please thee. Pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. 
Grant this, O Lord, for the honour of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. And together we say the prayer is in Christendom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and does promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, that will grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may best be expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. We now have our first hymn, which we immediately followed by our sermon, and our second will then be, our second hymn will then be after that, used as a time of reflection. Jesus Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts forever bring glory to your name. Amen. To those people who are teetotal, today's gospel reading might sound like a bit of an anticlimax. To those who have spent much of this lockdown enjoying a tipple to enable them to get through the challenges of this virus, the ability to turn water into wine might sound appealing. The miracle of Jesus turning water into wine is one of his more well-known miracles. It probably does have something to do with people's, shall we say, appreciation of alcohol. For some people, the promise of a glass of wine can offer relief from the intensity of the day although we know all too well the dangers that excess alcohol can bring, to most people a glass of wine is something to be cherished. It is connected with happy occasions, weddings, such as the one in Cana, birthdays, celebrations, getting together, that kind of thing. And here in the wedding to which Mary and Jesus were invited, there would have been nothing peculiar about bringing out the wine. Certainly, it would be unusual to bring out, say, water instead. I can just imagine it now. Goodness me, I've been drinking this Evian water all day, and now you've brought us some Buxton Spa water. I don't believe the difference. <laughs> well, perhaps not. 
naturally for me, I know I can see a lot of metaphorical imagery in these readings though. As I've said before, when we come across readings such as the one from Revelation, we can appreciate the imagery as the story is often so bewildering. Whereas when we look upon the gospels, it can prove harder. For me, when a story or a parable is depicted in such clear detail, it can be hard to pick apart what Jesus is showing us. To see a narrative behind the story that is told can prove difficult. Within this story, however, I believe that there is a clear narrative being shown. Jesus is, I believe, showing us the journey of spiritual enlightenment in stages. Firstly, we drink water. It is relatively easy to obtain. It is a basic necess necessity of life. And so we all drink of it. You might say it is also low in price, certainly compared to wine, especially fine wine. I believe that within this narrative, water represents the ordinary, the everyday way of living in this world, this physical world. Whereas wine is reserved for special occasions. We don't drink of it every day. Well, not in normal times. And so I'm led to believe that wine here represents the spiritual, the not so ordinary aspects of life. You might say the more refined aspects of life, the special moments that take your breath away. This miracle also shows Jesus establishing himself as the son of God. But although prompted by his mother Mary, we discover that it is not his time yet. For Jesus states, my hour has not yet come. This could be an indication that the people around him are not yet ready to receive him, rather than Jesus suggesting he's personally not yet ready. Those around him won't appreciate what he is doing, much like we don't often appreciate some aspects of our faith just yet, because we too are on a journey. I have said before, so please forgive me for repeating myself, but I believe we are spiritual beings living in a physical body, in a physical world, but one that is surrounded by spiritual blessings. And what we should be aiming for is balance between the two. In a sweeping generalisation, I would say that the majority of people are not aware of a deep spiritual aspect in their own personal lives. We might say they are merely drinking of the water of life rather than the wine. But as we become aware of our faith and it subsequently deepens, we become more aware of our spirituality and so our life slightly changes. Being aware of our spirituality might make us feel more settled perhaps, more whole. We might begin to value ourselves more and we might begin to increasingly value others and what they bring to life. We may see ourselves as part of a bigger picture and slowly but surely the spiritual aspect of what we sense increases and the physical decreases. This is certainly how I feel. The physical is all around me, of course it is, but within it I see, I feel, I sense the spiritual all around me, a drink of the wine. All those who are aware of the spiritual drink of the wine. They might see the richness of life, how those spiritual blessings are all around us. And of course we drink of the water, as water represents the physical here. And we are still living and breathing in a physical world, but with a spiritual dimension also present. So although we might drink the wine, being aware of the spiritual, it isn't the fine wine, because that is to come. That is a part of the next journey in our adventure. Did you catch my drift? 
As followers of Christ, we are called to show people the riches of recognising God, of recognising their spiritual self, but within the context of a physical world. And all over this land, including us here on the island, there is a conversation going on right now. A conversation that is seeking answers to the difficulties we are facing because the church is in decline and people are seeking spiritual sustenance from elsewhere. They are discovering the wine through a myriad of other ways. Nothing wrong with that, some might suggest, as they are at least discovering it. But we as a church are letting them down. And I believe this is where we need to have a look at ourselves. Are we too busy focusing upon our own kingdoms, working within our own comfort zones, and therefore failing to reach out and nurture those people who are seeking out their spiritual side to their lives? Instead of helping people turn their water into wine, are we turning wine into water? As part of this conversation, we need to examine ourselves and our consciences. How can we help people who are struggling physically in a physical world to find the spiritual sustenance we all so desperately need? God is reaching out to us, yearning for us to accept our own spirituality first yearning for us to unite and work together for the kingdom of God, not work individually for our own kingdoms. Nurturing our own self-interests, flattering ourselves because we've paid our parish share or because we've had a good turnout at the recent bring and buy sale, for example. We need to be supporting people and through that supporting ourselves giving purpose to our lives and reaping the riches that come with an awareness of our spirituality. My prayer for all of us listening to this message today is that we will drink of the wine that comes with an awareness of the kingdom of God and in time will appreciate the fine wine that comes at the last. Amen.
Thank you, Steve, for your sermon and Teresa for the hymns today. Hopefully you'll be humming them in the coming days. And thank you for coming and tuning in and watching this service. There will be another BCP service next week, a communion service. Again, if you would like an order of service, do let us know. Keep well and take care. And we'll end the service by saying the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>